Hi, everybody. I'm Frank Lieber, your host today on the CBS Sports Spectacular while Dick Stockton is off on assignment. We're in Sarasota, Florida for the final stop on the PBA Summer Tour, the $70,000 Sarasota Open. And Dave Davis and I will be along in just a moment or so with the championship match live from Sarasota. But that's not all. In addition, the National Hot Rod Association Spring Nationals from Columbus, Ohio, one of the most exciting and certainly one of the most noisy sports in all the world. And then we'll go to Daytona and one of the most talked about stock car races of the year, the NASCAR Sportsman 300. And we are at the National Trail Raceway in Columbus, Ohio for a spring ride, a gathering out here in the Midwest that draws over 60,000 people here annually for the National Hot Rod Association competition. Excuse me, sir. What brings you out to these drag races? Power. Power. You got it. That's the whole story. And to tell you more about the kind of power you're going to be seeing today, here's Carl Olson. Thank you, Ken. The purpose of any drag racing vehicle is to accelerate the quarter mile, and no vehicle does that better than the unlimited category known as the top fuel dragster. It's a 2,000 horsepower all-aluminum racing engine, a massive set of rear tires, aerodynamic wings, a lightweight body and about 20 feet of chrome molly tubing all tied together to make it the fastest accelerating vehicle in the world the other category we'll be looking at today is really the second cousin to the top fuel car known as a fuel funny car it uses the same engine huge rear tires as a top fuel car but it carries a lightweight one-piece fiberglass body it's much shorter about 10 feet in overall length but it is capable of the same type of speeds and elapsed times as the top fuel car. In both these categories, as in any form of motorsports, there is a distinct element of danger. How dangerous? Watch this. 41-year-old Columbus businessman, local driver, near lane, Jeg Coughlin. He's over 245 miles an hour. Shoot, deploys, rips off. He's down about 150 miles an hour, headed for the end of the course. He's headed for the barrier. Begins to bounce and takes the barrier in a savage, terrible crash. The safety crews are there within seconds of when this $35,000 fuel machine is destroyed. Coughlin, extricated from the machine and able to stand up by himself and walk away. From the driver's vantage, Colonel Olson, what's happening right here? Ken, because of the flexibility of this machine, under heavy braking, it starts bouncing violently. Jeg is fighting for control to get that car into the net straight, but it does flip over, the net catches it, does a violent snap roll backwards, and the car lands upside down. A local boy, Jeg Coughlin, wrapped in the clutches of that safety net, but far better than being wrapped up with that Armco barrier just 60 feet away. He sustained a broken hand, some broken ribs, but that was all after this incredible 100 plus mile an hour crash. In other action, here's the upset of the weekend. The unsinkable Kelly Brown, right here, sunk at the start as he red lighted. And Walt Barbins of Sugarland, Texas took the win. How could a guy with all the experience, he's won two nationals in a row, going to this event lose like this, Carl? Ken, any good driver will tell you if you don't red light once in a while, you just aren't trying hard enough. Well, he came off the line just that much too quickly, a millisecond, and loses it all. Here's the loser. Kelly, you're a low qualifier and look like a strong contender. Tell us what happened up there. Well, I just, uh, it took a lot of time staging and I was trying to get out there and I just uh, made a mistake somehow, you know. I don't, I don't have any answer for it except uh, the guys had the car prepared perfectly and it was uh, all my problem on my shoulders and I'll just have to uh, make it up again. Very bad move. One of the nice people in the motorsports world, Kelly Brown getting some help from another neat guy, the guy that beat him, Sugarland, Texas, Walt Barbin. And as the action went on, that man in the blue and white shirt, Walt Barbin, was defeated by this man, who moved to the semifinals, Rob Bruins, who faces off against Richard Tharp, the 1976 world champion. That's in semi one. In semi two, John Abbott, who's never won a national title. He goes against the master, 47-year-old Big Daddy Don Garlitz. But remember, Columbus is Garlitz, Jinx, track. All right, first semi for top fuel eliminators. And who do we have here, Carl? 
In the blue car, Richard Tharp driving for Candies and Hughes out of Houma, Louisiana. And on the far side, Rob Bruins driving for Gaines Markley. And they are staged. Bruins ready. On the start, Bruins in trouble. Looks like he lost the engine. Tharp, the easy winner here. Begins to do that dangerous dance with some wheel bounce at the end. But what happened at the beginning? Looked like the supercharger drive belt came off, Ken. That's usually a function of some breakage in the drivetrain, and the engine revolutions go out of sight. We're going to see in replay Rob Bruins' far lane as he comes off the line. Supercharger drive belt turning about 15,000 revolutions per minute, disengages. And as it does, it puts Richard Tharp into the finals. Richard, they say it takes a break to win a big drag race, and it looks like you just got yours. The 622 isn't the quickest run, but you're in the final. Well, you know, good luck's here. If you're going to win, you're going to win. Uh, I've had some good luck. I've had a lot of bad luck, too. <laughs> Who will Tharp face? Will it be the former world champion, this man here, Don Garlitz? Big Daddy himself, who's never had anything go his way in Columbus, Ohio. Or will it be his adversary, the Denver, Colorado campaigner, who's never won a major event, but is really pumped for this one, John Abbott. There you see him in the far lane, the Jet X. Who do you pick, Carl Olson? Abbott's been running awfully good, but Garlitz has the most experience of any drag racer in the world. It's going to be a hard one to call, Ken. Abbott versus Garlitz for the finals. They're off. Beautiful start. Garlitz propels himself across the line by about a car length advantage at 239 miles an hour. Garlitz goes into the finals. Coming up, the funny cars with the man himself, the snake, Don Prudhoe. Back at National Trail Raceway, this is Carl Olson with Ken Squire where a record crowd is waiting for the Funny Car semifinals, in which we'll see some of the most expensive equipment in the sport, which goes far beyond what we'll see on the racetrack. And here's Ken to take a closer look at some of that equipment. For those of you who think that drag racing is three minutes of snap, crackle, and pop for about six seconds of zoom, take a look at this Kenny Bernstein rig from Texas. $265,000 of home away from home. In this cab, the interior is a combination of a luxurious yacht and the instruments look like they come out of a flight deck on a commercial airliner. And this is the throne room. It has all the trappings, all the attendants that one would anticipate for a monarch of motorsport. And in here are the logistical supplies to keep this machine running for 10 months on the road without returning to the home fortress. Even a second vehicle to squire this car back and forth to the starting line. But perhaps most impressive is this arsenal, this engine room, with enough bits and pieces to rebuild and regroup after any skirmish, and enough major pieces, three of these $16,000 engines, to win any war. All that equipment didn't help Ken Bernstein, Ken, and it's important to note that every funny car racer here came with that kind of an investment. Well, here are two of the top. This is Al Segrini, and the man he's facing is Don Prudhoe. This is second round elimination. Segrini from Utica, Rome, New York, has the unenviable task of facing the snake. Four-time world champion, winner of 27 national events. There he is, the great Don Prudhomme coming to the line. He has to be the heavy favorite here, Carl. Oh, you bet. Uh, he's almost unbeatable, although he has been having a little trouble in recent months, Ken. They stay. Prudhomme near side. Al Segrini from upstate New York, far side, both in Plymouth. How much horsepower about to unleash here? About 4,000 altogether, Ken. The lights are off, and they're away. Upset. Segrini is defeating Don Prudhoe, who won it here a year ago. 226 miles per hour. Al Segrini advancing in this national championship event at Columbus, Ohio. Funny car competition. Don Prudhoe is eliminated before they get to the semis. Look at this start another time. Prudhoe near side, Al Segrini, a relative unknown compared to Don Prudhoe, just puts it to him. A beautiful run for Al Segrini. What has happened to Don Prudhoe? Here's Carl Olson. 
Don, it's been kind of a tough week, but you got this far. How do you feel about it? Well, you know, we, <laughs> I'm just lucky to get this far. We've really been struggling, and, uh, you know, what can I say? It's a green run good, and the show's over. Thank you. So the show is over for Don Prudhomme, but certainly not the year or the coming years. He is still one of the greatest names that drag racing has to offer. Pulling away from a bad day at Columbus, Ohio, Don Prudhomme. And the man that beat him is Al Segrini, who moves on in the semis. This is Segrini. Who will he face? Gary Bergen, that's who. Winner of the U.S. Nationals in 1976. First semi matchup. Second semi matchup. The Blue Max. Ray Beadle faces Ron Colson, the Hawaiian. Two excellent semi final rounds. And here is Bergen, the 33 year old Stanton, California campaigner, being encapsulated in his machine, the Orange Baron. What about Bergen and Segrini? These are two names you don't hear too much about. No, it's very rare that you see either of these cars get this far. Segrini's really having the national event of his life. He was the quickest qualifier in this field, and he ran very well in the first two rounds. Bergen, on the other hand, always runs strong, big numbers, but for some reason he doesn't seem to have the luck to carry him through. Now, what were those two machines doing right there? They're making their burnouts, Ken. That's getting the tires spinning in the bleach box, running across the starting line, laying down a hot layer of rubber. The crew then backs these cars right back in their tracks, and you have rubber-to-rubber -rubber adhesion for leaving the starting line with maximum traction. Sticky on sticky to really get them off and out of that box in a hurry. Ah, we have a fire coming out of Segrini's car. Out of the headers, you can see what looks to me like a real problem here. You bet it is, Ken. Uh, there's something definitely wrong with that car. That flame out of the number one cylinder is getting worse, and it looks like it's catching the side of the body on fire. Blowtorch and Al Segrini's automobile all the way from Utica Road, New York, and it looks like it's all going up in smoke for Segrini right here at the starting line. That has to be a frustration. And there's the sign. It's all over for Al Segrini before he ever was able to make the race. And Gary Burton will still make his run. And, of course, the guy who goes the fastest gets the choice of lane in the finals. For, for sure, he's going to stand on it. Right, Carl? You bet. He's going to put this thing to the wood and run it all the way out the back door because lane choice is always very valuable in a championship event like this. The Orange Baron, Gary Bergen. To the line. Solo run. Important that it is a good run. He needs to go to last time and the selection of Blaine in the finals. Boy, and there's a lot of tire smoke, Ken. He's broken the tires loose, and I'm sure that's going to result in a poor time. That's it. 6.51 is not a good time. And now to the line. The second semi. The Blue Max. This is Ray Beadle. Plymouth, out of Dallas, Texas. He squares off against Ron Colson, the Hawaiian. And there looks to be a problem on the car from Addison, Illinois, the Hawaiian. I think that car is locked in reverse, Ken. Every time he hits the throttle, it jumps backwards, and it doesn't look like it wants to go back into forward gear. So here again in the semis, it's going to be decided, predestined for Ray Beadle to make the finals, as there's this problem with Ron Colson with that Corvette machine. 1,500 pounds of funny car with everything at stake, about $11,000 to win. Ray Beetle is underway. Oh, and he gets very wild on the top end, Ken. It uh, looked like he was running over some of his own oil with an engine problem, and he only runs a 6.59, which is gonna cost him lane choice in the final. And here you see the Hawaiian being rolled backward. Ron Colson stuck in reverse and just out of luck here in these Nationals at Columbus, Ohio. And on the other end of the course, we have disasters on both ends of the course. It looks like the Blue Max is not able to shut off. The engine is still running. Well, that engine is hurt, Ken. There's, there's pieces coming out of it and it's liable. Oh, there it goes. Beatles engine finally expiring after devouring itself. Must have dropped a rod or something and just couldn't shut off for some reason. And notice how quickly those safety crews were there. The Hawaiian being rolled away on one end of the course. Meanwhile, on the top end, here is Ray Beetle out of that car. Carl Olson standing by to try to get a word. 
with Ray Beetle, who really rode down a hot one. Here's Carl. What happened, Raymond? Well, we had a bearing hurt that last round, and we sanded it, and uh, we knew we was going to have to change it this round, so I guess he went ahead and let the rod go. We thought it'd be good for one more round. We had to wait up there a little extra, waiting on rolling. How come the engine wouldn't shut off down here? Evidently, the fuel shut off must have slipped off the cable or something. We, they switched uh, they switched cables, so evidently it must have slipped off. So we're looking at a new motor for the final. We were planning on putting a fresh one in for the final anyway. And you're looking at Ray Beetle, who makes it into the finals here at Columbus, Ohio. The Blue Max with a new engine will be outfitted and ready to roar. He'll be running against the Orange Baron Gary Bergen as we move to the finals of this great national championship, National Hot Rod Association event. Bergen versus Beetle coming up. You're in the pits of Ray Beetle here at Columbus, Ohio in this National Drag Championship event, one of 11 each year. And it's a critical time for Ray Beetle. They're changing the engine on the Blue Max, and it has to be right by milliseconds, or it's all for not today. Meanwhile, the engine on his competitor, this is Bergen. The man, Gary Bergen, who's won one national championship event, making final adjustments, and in the pits, a large crowd, unusual, but what we see a lot of in this kind of drag competition. Before we see those funny cars, take a look at this pro stock competition. This is Lombardo driving one of those pro stocks, extensively reworked. They run with carburetors, they use gasoline. That's Bob Glidden, who has won nine straight times. The last time he was defeated was right here in Columbus, Ohio, a year ago. Lombardo has squared off against Bob Glidden six times and been defeated by him each time. Bob Glidden seeking his 24th major crown of the National Hot Rod Association. There's the grumpy Jenkins Camaro nearest to you. Bob Glidden on the outside, ready for the start. Remember, Lombardo was a whole shot expert. He really comes off that light, and he does. Pulls away. He has the advantage. Lombardo's out in front. They're even. Glidden is coming back at the line. Glidden wins it. Bob Glidden pulls it off after trailing at the start. Let's look at it again and replay, Carl. There's that patented Lombardo hole shot. And as they come out here, you can see that he's amassing about a one-car lead right off the starting line. But the Bob Glidden power makes it up, and he's got the car length advantage down at the finish. And Etta and Bob Glidden just keep rolling along. Meanwhile, the heavyweights are in their final moments of preparation. This is Richard Tharp's crew working on his top fuel dragster. Carl Olson is standing by with a man, Richard Tharp. Every time Richard Tharp races Don Garlitz, it's a classic. How do you feel about this one? It's going to be a classic. It's going to be good. You know, uh, if you're going to get beat, you always want to get beat by him because, you know, I, he's, you know, he's been my idol for a long time and he still is. And he's the greatest. Sounds a little bit like a defeatist attitude. Oh, no, you know. He's got to be real good out there. We're going to get him. Uh, we're, you know, it's our turn. Working for milliseconds in the infinite. The Garlitz crew trying to find that extra advantage. Don Garlitz, former world champion, preparing for this summit meeting with Tharp. Carl Olson's over there right now with Don Garlitz, Big Daddy himself. Don, we came by earlier and everything looked very leisurely, and all of a sudden we came back and you were in the middle of an engine change. Can you tell us what happened? Well, we were just doing our normal routine, running the rod bearings for the final, and the boys had cleaned the pan and brought the pan back with the, without, with the sludge in the bottom, and I run my hand down in there, and there was some metallic feeling. I knew something was wrong, and even though the rods looked good, we went for a main in, and sure enough, it spun number four main. I guess we've broken the crank in the motor. And so we had quickly had to go with an engine change. Now, this engine has been run. It has run real good. It's run 244 miles an hour, six flat, and won the Bradenton WCS meeting and was maintenanced and put in the trailer. Now, we won't have a chance to warm it. It will be cold, but it should run all right. Garland's versus Tharp, that's upcoming. But right now, it's the funny car finale from Columbus, Ohio. You're looking at the Orange Baron from Stanton, California, Gary Bergen, and there's the Blue Max ready to go once again with the veteran Ray Beetle out of Dallas, Texas. How do you see it, Carlos? 
Well, you just can't call a race like this. They both had trouble, but they've also both run good. They're off. Bergen away. Beetle comes back. Bergen throwing out a lot of smoke. Bergen wins it. The 1976 national champion, runner-up at Sonera in Montreal a year ago, victorious. His crew is ecstatic. Let's watch the replay here. On the start, a little bit sideways, and then gathering it back up. A lot of smoke out from underneath the car of Bergen. The Beetle car on the inside. Remember, they made an engine change. Apparently, they just didn't have enough time, and Bergen comes home the winner. Here's Carl. 6.49 wasn't the quickest run that was made here this weekend, but it was good enough to win. Uh, what kind of trouble did you encounter out there? Well, towards the afternoon, of course, like we said before, the, uh, the heat of the day makes the track get somewhat slippery, you know, and it makes hard to make horsepower. And the track gets, just, just gets awful tricky, you know, we smoke the tires twice. It's good enough to get to the finish line first. I guess that's what counts. Congratulations, Gary. Thank you, Carl. One of the biggest wins of his career for Gary Bergen. Winning here in Columbus, Ohio. A long time between wins. Here it comes. Garlands is ready to go against Richard Tharp. This is the one we've all been waiting for. The nitro-burning top fuel ultimate quarter-mile acceleration vehicles. There you see Richard Tharp ready to take on the legend. Tharp in the number eight Candies and Hughes machine. And there he is, Don Garlands at the line. Great lead, out in front, Garland's, loses it for a moment. Clark gets sideways, Garland's wins it. Don Garland's pulls it off. What a race. Marginal traction from almost the moment they came out of the gate. There you saw that white machine sideways. Then, same thing happens to Tharp, and Don Garland's wins. 611 at 237 miles an hour. Looks like the spare engine works just fine, Don. Yeah, it shook me a little bit. That's where it lost some of the time, but it run good in the middle of the course. I know you've won an awful lot of these races. Is it just as good every time? Yeah, and this is especially uh, good because, you know, I've had a lot of bad luck here at Columbus. I've never won a race here, and uh, it's really a thrill to, to do good here because I have so many fans in this part of the country, and they've always cheered for me, and I've always let them down, so maybe finally I came through once. Congratulations, Don. Back to you, Ken. Thank you, Carl. As you can see, there were thunderheads gathering to greet Don Garlitz when he came across the line to win this masterful performance, one of his best in the 25 years he's been in drag racing. He created his own lightning for sure, and we're going to get both here in just a moment. Earlier, they talked about the fact that power was the story of this kind of racing. Actually, there are three Ps. One for sure is power. The other is a guy named Parks, Wally Parks, who has made this some of the most exciting racing there is in motorsport. And three people. People now running for cover, but as big a crowd as we've ever seen at any motorsports event. Four. The national championships at Columbus, Ohio, and Carl Olson, I'm Ken Squire, getting out of the 